We got Alex Morono back here on the program. He's going to be taking on Zach Otto at UFC on ESPN Plus 4 on March 9th. Alex, what's up, man? How are you? I, I understand you just finished up some training today. Yeah, I just walked in the door. This this interview was very well timed. But, uh, but yeah, Saturdays are always really fun. So at my, at my gym, Gracie Baja, the Woodlands, we do an hour and a half, like really hard competition style grappling. You know, we have a lot of jujitsu competitors, so we roll hard there. And then we speed up to get our MMA sparring rounds in. Saturday's always a – it's a hard one. It's a great way to finish out the week. And, man, I actually felt better today than, than I have on any other Saturday. I won most of my rounds. I did good with Daniel Pinedo, who's freaking awesome. So, man, it's been a good day. I feel good. Usually I'd be a lot more drained and withered. Yeah, well, no, I like the positivity in this interview, man. That's, uh, that's great. I like to hear that. And uh, you got a lot to be positive about, man. You're coming off another good win. Uh, last time at uh, UFC Fight Night 141, you get that uh, victory over Keenan Song. Uh, I know it was a decision, but you must have been pretty happy with your performance in that fight. Yeah, so I've made some mistakes in the past and had like the knockout be my main goal in that in that China fight. I knew Keenan was going to be a really sharp striker, so our game plan was to just do damage. And I wasn't sure how good his striking would have been, so we had like an auxiliary game plan to wrestle and grapple with him if it didn't work. But after the first round, I don't think I got, really got hit with anything, and uh, and knew I could like beat him to the punch. And my movement's a little weird, and he I know he couldn't k- catch my timing. And uh, he was bleeding pretty good after that first round, and I knew I kind of I had I had that beat down, and uh, and was like winning all the brawls, and it was awesome. So I was I was happy to get the decision when we got fight of the night. I, you know I haven't really had like a war in the UFC yet, and uh, and granted that one was pretty one sided, but that third round he actually did some damage, and I think that's what really kind of like turned the tide for fight of the night. So I was happy to to get the job done, you know, make the most money I could have made in that in that fight, and then come back home. That was a tough trip. The, the flights were, were late, the bags were lost, you know, it was a very different country, it was on Thanksgiving, I mean, there was just, there was a lot, like, going against my, myself and my coaches, and uh, we had, like, one of the best performances we could have asked for, if we could get through that, we could get through any fight, so there were so many, so many good things to take away from that, from that fight. So you just got to tell the airline to mess up all your stuff, and then that, that seems to be the, the common theme of getting things to, to work out, then you'll have a good fight, right? Man, yeah. So, you know, I got all my Reebok stuff, but my poor, my striking coach, so one of my coach's bags came in, my striking coach bag did not. So we didn't have any gear to warm up with, no pads, no gloves. It was tough. And uh, he had, dude, I had to borrow my underwear. Man, it was rough. He got his bag, but like with two days left to go. So, man, it was. Did you get all your stuff? Did, did they lose anything or no? I mean, uh, no, we got it all back, but, you know, we, we land in China and, uh, you know, there's like a UFC rep there and the UFC takes care of everything. It's awesome. But like, we have to tell them about our bags and stuff. And like, there's a huge language barrier. It, we were, you know, we joked, we we're like, man, it's, what if they lose our bags? And sure enough, we show up there and they're not on that carousel. And we're like, ah, what a fun way to start this trip. Yeah, no, that's uh, always a pain in the ass. That's why anytime I travel, uh, I try and just take carry on, but because uh, you never know. It's but but I guess in your case you can't because you got all the fight stuff, so it's tough. You're right? Yeah, so. pads and gear, which could yeah, yeah yeah. There's nothing you can do. I hear you about that. Uh, let's talk about this matchup because uh, it seemed like this was a fight that was supposed to happen a couple times, or it seemed like you guys were into it, both of you. Um, where did this start? Uh, this idea of you guys fighting each other because it seems like there was talk of this fight even before your last fight. Yeah, that son of a bitch. So I actually watched you and Zach Otto's interview last night. It popped up on YouTube, which was cool. And uh, and man, I like don't want to dislike the guy, but I don't like him. He uh, he. So I've asked for specific matchups in the UFC, and as soon as it doesn't happen, I drop it and move on. And I know what happened. He watched my Jordan Mean fight, and he thinks I'm gonna be easy to like lay and prey on. And he's like looking for an easy fight, which makes me just dislike the guy's character. And, uh, and I fought good wrestlers and grapplers, fought Derek Krantz and, and scrambled up to my feet instantly every time, gassed him out the first and finished the fight. Loved Derek Krantz, by the way. Same with Nakamura, great grappler, wasn't able to get me, take me down. With Jordan Mean, I just, I wanted to stand. I wanted to get like a big knockout finish. And when we weren't standing, I just, I don't know, I never made the, the switch to like want to grapple. It's not that I could not grapple him. I just, I just in, for whatever reason in that moment, like decided not to and then by the time I got my shit together it was the third round and it was just too late and he's just like looking for an easy fight and that just makes me dislike the guy the fight's not gonna be easy I have been working get-ups like you wouldn't believe especially with the guys at Fortis and my damn my, my game plan again is to do as much damage as possible but this time I'm gonna like it even more so uh, you know if, if Zach's not prepared for a three round like bloody war he's gonna be in for a, a wicked surprise and like he knows my game plan is to punch him hard in the face and then that's what's going to happen. You know, I've been working some like slick subs, some really good counter wrestling. My wrestling's better than it's ever been because I've been like, you know, training against it. You know, it's funny. I'm preparing for the worst, which is him to lay and pray, but I'm hoping for the best, which is him to stand and strike, which he actually does a little more than I had thought when I took the fight, which is good news for me. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this fight. 
Well, I'm I'm glad you watched my interview and that it uh, you know added a bit more to your camp, which I think is great. So that that's uh, that at least I'm doing my job, so that's great. Um, training camp, uh, we we talked about the cross training, uh, training partners. Who are some of the guys you got to work with for this camp? I know there's a whole list, but who are some of the ones you work with a little bit more than others? Man, so at Fortis, Jeff Neal, who I believe will be champion one day, best striking in the UFC. Uh, work with him probably the most at Fortis, and then also Charles Bro. They also have another guy named uh, Ramez. Uh, Brahima, he's in Legacy, and man, dude's a freaking grinder. Dude's a just a grappling and wrestling monster. Good striking too. So at Fortis, it's it's, it's the training partners are great, but it's the coach, it's Safe, who just like re- 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 he asks a lot from us. And I've I've never wanted to make a coach more proud. I don't I don't know what it is. It's a, it's a fun it's a fun thing, you know, because I've been like the 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 team captain, the leader at my gym, which is great. But it was more so by necessity when our coach had left back in like 2012. And uh, so I just, I always liked having a general to follow. Like if there's a war, I don't want to be the one calling the shots in the, in the game room. I want to be on the battlefield, you know, swinging the ax. And, uh, and just with safe, I just, I just, I want to make them proud. I want to make the team proud. I want to bring this win back to Texas for my team at the Woodlands and then for the guys up at Fortis. So, you know, just all the guys in UFC at Fortis have been awesome. Uh, and then in Houston, man, I, I go to Team Tooks, guy named Cameron Graves. I work with a lot. The, all the guys at Four Ounce, all the guys at Gracie Baja West Chase. And then, of course, all the freaking killers at my gym at Gracie Baja, the Woodlands. You know, a lot of good kickboxers and a lot of good jujitsu guys, man. If anything, I have too many training sessions. I can't, I can't get them all in in a week. I have to be, I have to pick and choose. And I'm about a year in on some very consistent strength and conditioning. With a, he's an ex rugby pro. His name's Adam Latiti. He's a New Zealand guy. He just had twins, by the way. So Adam, congrats. But I work with him all the time, and uh, and just like quick twitch, fast twitch muscles are good. I never get tired hitting pads anymore. Ever since I've been doing that, so I can wrestle all day long. It's nice. I've been doing this 12 years, and I'm better than ever by far. I'm very much so looking forward to fight again. How far is it to get to Fortis? Because uh, I hope it's not like Diego uh, Ferreira. I heard that he has to drive like nine hours to get there. It's crazy. No, it's 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 three hours if you're obeying the law, and if and if and, and if you're trying to beat records, it's about two and a half hours. So it's not okay. bad. Okay, that's good. Um, yeah, no, that, that's interesting. Uh, weight cuts going well, I imagine. Uh, yeah. So uh, the beginning of this year, like 2019 is a year of health and a year of technique. So I've been, a, I do probably like five private lessons a week, like one with my jujitsu coach, two with my strength and conditioning, sometimes three, uh, one with the wrestling coach. And uh, so I was just, I'm just really getting my drills in and I'm going to do a one year long fight camp diet essentially, which is just very clean eating. But like the beginning of the year, I had a hunch I'd fight in March. So I essentially started camp January 1st. So now I'm, I can make weight tomorrow. I'm about 182 pounds right now. Easy stuff. Good for you, man. Sticking to your guns because we're coming up to March right now. So that, that's good. Uh, so far, so good to 2019. So that's good you kept it up. Yeah. Three weeks out to the fight, too. You know, feel great. And then as soon as this fight's done and, and I'm, the, the diet stays the same. And it's funny. It's just a, it's a mindset. Like, you know, I totally cut out, like, all breads and all forms of, like, uh, of like the bread. And uh, and when I see it, I don't, like, crave it. I, like, dislike it because I know it's going to make me feel bad. And I've uh, really amped up, like, a lot of good vegetable juices. I think that's, like, the like the secret. I don't really do any supplements. The USADA testing really has has me conscious of like what I'm putting in. So I take almost no supplements. There's some like whey proteins, but for like joint, for joint health, I do a lot of natural vegetables and uh, every day probably do two, maybe like 16 to 32 ounce vegetable drinks and feel so good. Okay. That's uh, good to hear. Glad you figured that all out. Uh, how do you see this fight playing out on March 9th? You feel like your hand's going to get raised, but how do you see it unfolding? Uh, best case scenario, put him to sleep with a knockout. Also, good scenario, beat the shit out of him for three rounds. I don't care. I just want to see the dude bleed, and I want it to be by my will. Uh, you know, I've never really disliked a guy in a fight, and it's definitely not going not gonna to mess with, like, my head. I always go in there, and people know. I always go in there, like, ready to fight to the death. And at this time, I'm just going just gonna to enjoy landing those punches a little bit more. Uh, you know, I, I, I might, my game plan, you know, or I can kind of predict his game plan. I don't want to give too much away, you know, but... You know, I think he'll do one thing. I want him to do another thing, and we're prepared for everything. So, I'm not. I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure. You know, he switches stances. Sometimes he'll strike. Sometimes he'll wrestle. But, uh, but yeah, he. I'm. I'm gonna try to do some damage to this guy. Last question before I let you go. Where do you feel like a win over Zach puts you in the division? Because uh, you know, if you keep this up, uh, you know, you're getting. You're on a nice roll right now. So it'd be good to. You know, if you get the win here, especially a finish, I think that would propel you up pretty well. Yeah, that's the goal. That's the plan. Uh, look to re-sign after this. And uh, and again, I just absolutely love being in the UFC. You know, I have an awesome career running my gym with my amazing wife. And uh, thankfully, business is good. I love my students to death. Everything fighting-wise is extracurricular. So I'm not I'm not doing this for the money. I'm doing this for, like, the thrill of the battle. And, uh, and so, like, my main goal is not to make money, but it's to stay in the UFC. So, uh, you know, 
after this fight. Hopefully, I'm healthy enough to pick something up really fast. And uh, and, and, I, and Sean Shelby knows I I've, I pick up a lot of short notice fights when they ask, and uh, and will take really whatever they give me. Not a lot a lot of big names in, in in line. Plus, I don't like to look too far ahead of this fight. My plan is to beat up Zach Otto really bad. And then, uh, and then just take the next best opportunity they offer, you know. And and I was like fighting the old veterans. Like it was really cool seeing Tiago Alves get a win, you know. Diego Sanchez fighting Mickey Gall. I just like seeing these OG guys, you know, fighting and winning. So hopefully, I can get one of those guys. It, so what is your contract status? Is this the last fight on the deal? Uh, for the second one, yes. And uh, you know, and I could have waited around and, and and tried to like renegotiate, but I wanted to stay active. And, uh, and get a fight earlier than later and then go from there. So Okay, gotcha. So there's a lot riding on this fight, obviously, because if you win, then you got a lot of leverage. If you don't win, then you know you lose some of that leverage, right? Yeah, that's kind of how it is in every fight. So a lot of guys, they, they, they really question why I fight my contracts out. One, I don't know how much of a choice I have. But two, if you guys, if people really read the UFC contracts, they, I mean, naturally, so they hold the power, they can cut you whenever they want. I don't, I don't think the amount of fights really has any actual clout. It's one of those kind of like things that people give a little more power to than they should. You know, like look at uh, Gerald Harris, John Fitch. Those dudes had winning records with more fights on their contract and they got booted out because they were boring. You know, so, so there's, you know, the UFC holds the power rightfully so. And I'm very much so willing to play ball and I'm very fortunate and, uh, and just thankful that, that I, I'm with this, this organization and, and living a dream. You know, a lot of people don't realize I, I started training because I was a fan of, of fighting and like Mortal Kombat and the Matrix and the UFC and the old pride fights. I remember it was in high school. My friend showed me a highlight video of Mirko Krokop head kicking people and it blew my mind and started training shortly after and just had enough discipline and had like the right mindset to, to do well in competition and against all odds made it to the UFC and, and I'm doing relatively well, so I'm going to keep riding this as long as I can. And, yeah, the plan is to stay with the UFC. You, you don't really want to test free agency and see what's out there because I'm sure Bellator or, you know, one or any of those uh, organizations would, would love to pick you up just with your fight style. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so <clears throat> when Glory came to Houston recently, actually, and uh, and if I was not in the UFC, I would have very much so rallied to fight on that glory card. So I plan on staying in the UFC as long as I possibly can, ideally until I have to like retire from MMA, which is probably around like age 36 to 38. But beyond that, you know, a very, a very uh, amicable split. There's other martial art goals I would like to accomplish, like the fight to win submission only matches. That's a big feather in a cap. I got one of my coaches fighting on the one in Houston March 1st. Uh, it would be so cool to fight for glory one day. And then I always wanted to go to Thailand, but I'm not going to go until my UFC run is done because I want to do a Thai fight down there. So, you know, there's a lot to do on like a personal accomplishment level, but in terms of best place to fight on planet earth is the UFC. I will do everything in my power to stay there. And, uh, and again, it's, it's not about the money. So like, I know like Sage left because they offered him more or whatever, but I just don't think that was a great idea. You know, a lot of these fighters don't do it just for the paycheck or for the fame. They do it for, like, again, the thrill of the battle. And that is 100% why I fight like I fight and, and what I'm doing in the UFC. So I'm going to stick to my guns. And we can't wait to see those guns come ablazing on March 9th. Uh, UFC Wichita, uh, Alex, always appreciate you taking the time, man. Just remind people where they can find you on social media. And if you have any sponsors or shout-outs, the floor is yours, man. Cool, yeah. Everything's Alex Morono MMA. Uh, and then my gym's MMA The Woodlands.